Hey, how's it going? This is Kevin from Audio Digital, and today we're going to get into programming FM. Here we are in FM 8, and first thing, we want to get into what is what in this interface. Now, we're on the expert page, and um, we have this little chart here, and this is showing us our operators. Now, first, what is an operator? Well, an operator is pretty much an oscillator. It uh, generates a waveform. But in uh, FM synthesis, we, used, we use one of these operators generally to modulate another one. And we modulate the frequency. Now, technically, we're not modulating the frequency. We're modulating the phase in FM synthesis. Um, it's a technical distinction, but it, it actually does make a difference. True FM synthesis or frequency modulation is not nearly as interesting sounding as actually phase modulation is. But in any case, what we're doing is we're modulating the phase of one of these operators with the other one. And that gives us harmonics that aren't normally there. So here we are. We have one operator that is operational and it's turned on right now and it's being routed to the output bus, which is this bar here. And we can see that it's at 80% of full volume. So let's listen to that. So that's simply a sine wave. And sine waves are all that originally could be done uh, with FM uh, synthesis from one operator. In FM8, we can choose from a bunch of different waveforms, but we're not going to do that right now. We're just going to stick with this sine wave. So... If I go here and I mess with this level here, I can make this sound louder or softer. So basically any one of these little squares here can be dragged on and turned up basically. So if I click on this and I turn it up, what we have here is that operator D is sending signal at 100% to this operator X, which is technically not an operator, but we'll get into that later. So um, let's turn that off. And if I go here and I turn this one up, it's basically sending signal from F to B at 74%. So when we send a signal from one operator to another, the one that is send, sending becomes the modulator, and the one that is receiving becomes the um, carrier. What does that sound like? Well, let's try that. Let's um, go ahead and turn on E here, and we're going to send signal from E into F. Turn it up. Let's see what it sounds like. Oh, well, nothing, because I did, I'm not routing F into the output bus. That can be remedied just like that. So when we don't route it, it sounds like this. When we do, it sounds like that. As I move it up and down, you can hear that the timber is changing. Now, again, we're only listening to F. E is just messing with F. And this is kind of like the the opposite in some ways of subtractive synthesis. We're starting simple and we're creating something more complex. So great. Now we have our basic first FM sound going on here. And we can turn this up and get different timbers. But we probably don't want to sit here and drag this thing up and down all day. But what is important to note here is that a change in volume or a change in the intensity of the signal being sent from the modulator to the carrier changes the timbre of the carrier. Up in this little box, we can see the harmonic pattern that is being produced into the um, output bus. So as I move this up and down, you can see that the harmonics are changing. 
So that is the essence of the power of FN synthesis, that you can change the harmonic pattern by feeding in signal from one thing to the other. So what if we want that to change over time? That's easy to do. We can uh, do that in several different ways. So let's go to operator E and right here we have an envelope and that's gonna change the amount of signal being sent from E to F over time. Now this number isn't gonna change, but basically whatever number we have here is gonna be the peak maximum volume possible. So if I do something like this, let's listen to that. Again, uh, without that envelope, with it, and let's make it longer so we can hear it kind of gradually go down. So that's kind of our first FM sound. Now, let's look at um, what we can do with uh, the different volume levels. So if we go all the way up to 100%, It's pretty tinny and so forth. If we drag it down, it's a little bit more subdued. So what we can do is we can actually control how high that level is going to get also with velocity. So we're just going to turn up the velocity here a bit. So now we can get really high levels by hitting the key harder and get some dynamics going. Those are a little bit out of control. You probably want to make it more tight if you're really doing a program. But you can see some of the flexibility and the power that's available in doing this. Now let's try to make kind of a kind of a bell-like sound or something like that. Um, so we're going to keep that at full level and let's go here to F. Now, what happens with F, whatever envelope we give it is, is basically gonna be the volume envelope. In other words, no matter what happens, the, the sound is going to follow in level whatever we set up here. So let's listen to that. So this envelope goes all the way from full volume down to nothing. And that's what's happening. So even if I don't have this guy on here affecting F, we're still going to get that kind of a bell-like shape to the volume. So now let's bring this back in. Let's look at ease on envelope again. So if we want that to be kind of a sharper change in tim timber at the beginning, we can do that. But if we want it to kind of be a little bit more gradual, that changes the sound pretty significantly. So again, to recap, the envelope of the modulator is going to change how the timber changes over time, and the envelope on the carrier is going to change how the volume changes over time. And um, doing these in different ways can give you a, a great variety of sound. Uh, let's do one more example here. If we want the sound to kind of come in slowly, um, or if we want the timber to change in the beginning slowly, we can just uh, drag this over like that. And that gives us a different character of sound. We can also do the same here because when we do this, the volume still comes in instantly, but the change in timber is happening slowly. So, I don't know, it kind of reminds me of like a, 
a trumpet sound or some sort of brass sound a little bit. Um, but let's go ahead and make the volume also come up slowly. So we get more of a pad-like sound. Now, the possibilities here are pretty huge, even using just two operators and some envelopes. And that's all we have time for today. But I hope this gives you an idea of how envelopes are important to FM synthesis. In the next video, what we're going to do is get into how the pitch ratios can affect the timber and the sound when we uh, change them in different proportions. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, um, give this video a like and if you want to see this whole series, be sure to subscribe so you can get right up there on the next video. Also, um, leave a comment. Let me know what was clear and what wasn't and if you have any questions. But other than that, thanks so much for watching this and have a wonderful day. Bye.